Good morning. Uh, I'm Jia Jie Zhang. Uh, as Jack mentioned, I'm the Dean of the McWilliams School of Biomedical Informatics at UT Health Houston. AI is everywhere. Almost everyone is using AI, even if many of them do not know they are doing it. So in this presentation, I will give a very high level overview of AI and its applications in medicine. Now let me start by showing you a new feature of iPhone, personal voice. Just played with Apple's personal voice on my iPhone. This deep fake, which is secure and private, is very impressive. You can create a voice that sounds like your own to use to type to speak in video and voice calls and in supported communication apps. This shows the amazing things that artificial intelligence can do. This is the speech of the text I typed with my own voice trained on my iPhone. Apple advertised this as a feature for people who are about to lose their voice. However, as you can imagine, this is becoming a booming business. You can create an interactive model of a person with deep thick voice along with the digital persona or digital twin. And you can have a live conversation with the digital person, live or deceased. Just play. Good morning. I am Emily Smith reporting from the Helix Park at the Texas Medical Center. The McGovern Medical School and the McWilliams School of Biomedical Informatics at UT Health Houston are celebrating their huge success of collaboration in the most recent NIH funding cycle. During a two month period, they received 16 awards in medical AI for a total of $31 million. Congratulations to them. I will come back after a short commercial break. Again, as you can see, this is a uh, image and video created on ChatGPT. And uh, ChatGPT and other large language models are very good at this. So ChatGPT became an instant success since it's released on November 30th, 2022. It reached 1 million users in just five days. This is not a hype. It is an indication of the many cognitive tasks that ChatGPT can not only do, but do very well, and even better than human in many cases. Let's take a look at the performance of ChatGPT for the U.S. medical license exams. ChatGPT's performance on the U.S. medical license exams has been improved dramatically over the past two years. GPT-4 with medical prompt reached 90% accuracy. It was a huge improvement of the 38% accuracy by PubMed Bird in 2021. Please note that the average passing score for medical school students is about 60%. Given the impressive performance of the machine, so what is the future of medical education? What medical students should learn, what not to remember, and what new skills should they learn? In the future, maybe in a 10-year time frame, the classrooms in the McGovern Medical School might look like this, which is created by ChatGPT anyway. Medical students do not have to memorize everything anymore. Instead, they will learn new knowledge and skills about AI. By doing so, they will learn how to solve complex medical problems with improved performance. With specialized AI models for medical specialties, they may actually may become generalist again, of course, working together with machines. Large language models such as ChatGPT are very good at text processing. You can now create your own personalized ChatGPT and publish it in the GPT App Store. For example, I created a personalized ChatGPT for our school website. Its answer to the question about a PhD admission requirement is excellent, much better than what I can offer. 
large language models are also good at coding. I created a localized ChatGPT for UT Health Houston website and asked it to generate a Python code to search for the top 10 NIH funded researchers. It generated a good starting template. With interacting prompts, you can complete a programming task. So today, the hottest programming language is English. AI is getting into every aspect of our work at life. You can find AI application, not just large language model based, for a lot of things you would like to do. You can do images, videos, audios, you can do chatbots, and you can do marketing design, research, art, and so on. But here we have a big question. So what is the future of certain jobs? For example, will some STEM jobs disappear? And more generally, what is the future of education, work, and life? We should all think about this uh, carefully and seriously. We have seen some extraordinary abilities and capacities of AI, especially ChatGPT4. So what is under the hood? A simple answer is that it is a super digital brain that has the knowledge of 5,000 years of human civilization. And more importantly, the ability to use the knowledge to perform a lot of cognitive tasks, and in many cases, better and faster than human. ChatGPT4 is trained of text the size of three times of the Library of Congress. It can process, remember, and generate 50 pages of text and can understand a lot of languages. However, the model is very expensive to train. The electricity alone is sufficient to power 5,000 homes in U.S. for an entire year. The top left chart shows the recent history of AI. It shows the number of pages in the Google universe that contain the specific keywords normalized by the total number of pages. It clearly, it clearly shows the breakaway point in 2012. That's the beginning of today's AI revolution. The chart on the right shows the projection of the medical AI market in U.S. An annual growth rate of 36% will bring the market in 2030, 10 times of what it is today. The AI revolution today is as fundamental as the agricultural and industrial revolutions. It is liberating people from cognitive labor, just like the industrial revolution that freed people from physical labor and the agricultural revolution that solved the biological problem of hunger. So today is the James Watt moment. We are all lucky to be part of this fundamental economical transformation driven by AI. There are no words that are exaggerations for what is happening today. So now let's take a quick look at what AI can do for medicine. The Lasker Award, which is considered as the pre Nobel Prize for Medicine, was given to the AlphaFold team at Google last year. AlphaFold is an AI system based on deep learning that has more or less solved the protein 3D structure problem. There were about 800,000 structures solved by a human. AlphaFold will add 100 million more by the end of this year. I will not be surprised if someday AI is the winner of a Nobel Prize. Now, let me show you some of the exciting medical AI projects that we are doing at the McWilliam School of Biomedical Informatics at Health. But before I do that, I want to give you a snapshot of our school. Our school is so far still the only freestanding school in the nation in biomedical informatics, and it is the largest among the 100 programs that belong to the AMIA Academic Forum. As of 2023, we have a little bit more than 800 people 
including 65 regular and 64 adjunct faculty, close to 500 graduate students, 140 research and 48 admin staff. Among the students, we have uh, more than 80 doctoral students, 267 master students, and 135 graduate certificate students. Uh, we have two PCAS awardees, 12 academic, academic fellows, and other uh, awardees. The, the research expenditure at our school last year is more than 20 million. Our academic programs cover the entire spectrum of graduate informatics education, including two doctoral degrees, one master degree with two tracks, various two degree programs such as MDMS. We also have graduate certificate program with multiple tracks, also accelerated four plus one programs, and most recently the ACGME accredited clinical informatics fellowship program that is designed for physicians. Due to the rapid growth of our school, we recently divided the school into three departments. The Department of Health Data Science and Artificial Intelligence, the Department of Clinical and Health Informatics, and the Department of Bioinformatics and System Medicine. Independent of the departments, we have eight research centers and six application cores that are across multiple departments. They span the entire hierarchy of the biological system from molecules to cell for bioinformatics, tissues and organs for imaging informatics, individual patients for clinic informatics, and populations for public health informatics. Some of the medic AI projects that are happening in our school are shown here. The list is expanding rapidly. Imaging is uh, the early playground for AI applications. Prediction is one of the major threats of machine learning in the early days. They include the prediction of sepsis onset, COVID uh, patients who need a ventilator, disease progression, and risk scores. We also do competition of biomarker discovery for Parkinson's and uh, Alzheimer's from motor movement and imaging. Of course, uh, natural language processing or NLP is a very active application area for AI. But now the traditional methods of NLP are being rapidly replaced by large language models, which are better, faster, and much easier and cheaper to develop and implement. We also develop AI applications for business applications, such as automating the medical processing of fax documents and optimizing the medical bidding process. McWilliam School of Biomedical Informatics is a major player in medical AI in the nation, not just in Texas. During the latest NIH funding cycle from August 2023 to October 2023, our faculty received 14 awards for a total of 31 million. All of these awards are our medical AI. For technical details of the many medical AI projects at our school, you can learn more about them in the presentations by the investigators. To close my presentation, I would like to make a comment on one issue that was amplified by the AI revolution, fear and anxiety. For some, AI represents an existential threat, a concern of AI's rapidly expanding role and its potential to surpass human intelligence. I would argue that AI is just another cognitive artifact, like a calculator, language, and mathematics, which augmented human intelligence, not replaced it. The biological brain has not really changed much over the um, uh, millennia. What has changed is the exponential growth of data and technology. Human and technology work together as a distributed system to accomplish more complex tasks faster and better and with human guidance safer. Thank you all for attending this presentation. Please feel free to contact me if you have any follow-up questions.